I'm Heather Harrington. Um, 10 years ago, I was an emergency veterinarian. And five years ago, I owned my own event planning business. Um, yeah, about a year ago, I decided to start coding. Um, my husband had been nagging slash encouraging me to give it a shot, and I finally did. I heard about this program called Ada Developers Academy in Seattle that had a whopping 11% acceptance rate. It's a tuition-free school for women and non-binary individuals, and I thought, no way, are they going to take me? And they did. And so I dropped everything and decided to become a junior developer with very little background in technology. And I'm going to talk today about how to succeed being a junior developer. But first of all, we're going to talk about my background a little bit more. So when I moved, I moved from across the country. I'm actually from Pittsburgh, woo, and left behind my husband and all of my pets to move out here. So I truly am new, and I'm far away, and I'm non-traditional background, and I'm going for it. Um, the husband isn't in any of these pictures. It's just my pets, because <laughs> I miss them maybe more than I miss him. Um, <laughs> The slides have very little to do with what I'm actually talking about, but I put them up here because really cute animals. I put out a plea to my Facebook friends and they came through. So cute animals and some words. If you don't like what I'm saying, just look at the animals. So how to succeed as a junior developer when you have very little background in technology? Ask questions. I just had my midpoint review and this was pretty much what they told me to do was ask more questions. If you come from a non-traditional background, you have things to offer that other people don't. You have a weird perspective, you've never seen the product before. Do not be afraid to ask questions. And I know it's gonna be hard. You're gonna feel dumb, um, high, hardcore imposter syndrome going on right here. But I swear you have something to offer no matter how junior you are, no matter what your background, you're there for a reason. One of the best things that you can do and one of the scariest things you can do is participate in stand-up. Your group might have a meeting every day where they get up and they talk about what they did yesterday, what they're gonna do today, and what their blockers are. Doing that first participation in stand-up and talking during stand-up is terrifying. I was scared to death when I first had to contribute in stand-up, but I did it. Because you have to, your group genuinely wants to know what you're doing, no matter how junior you are. They care about what you're doing. And you know what I did during one of those stand-ups? I asked a question. I work for Amazon right now. I'm an intern there. And Amazon has so many weird things that they do, so many weird internal tools, that I finally one day said, hey, I don't know what that is. Um, is that because I just don't know what it is, or is it a weird Amazon thing? And it was a weird Amazon thing. I wasn't supposed to know what it was. <laughs> It was just something bizarre that no one except people who worked at Amazon ever would have heard of. And I would never have known that had I not had the, the guts to ask a question. Another thing that's really important is getting to know your team members. And as someone, contrary to me being up here, who is really introverted and really shy, it was terrifying for me to go up and talk to my team members. Why? Because all of them had more experience than me. There are people on my team who have master's degrees in computer science, and I'm like, I've been coding for five months. <laughs> and I felt ridiculous going up to them because like, what do I have to offer? I mean, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm the new person. But you know what I did? <laughs> That's right. Can you tell what was on my midpoint review? I asked questions. It is so important when you are on a team to not be afraid to ask your coworkers questions. It will be scary, but the more you get to know them, the easier it'll be. So really get to know your team members. Um, like the presenter before was saying, go out to lunch with them. If they go out to lunch, make sure that you're included. If they're doing team activities, make sure that you're included. Really get to know them so that asking those questions is maybe a little bit less scary. This next one sucks. If you are a person from an underrepresented group, if you are someone without a traditional background in tech, if you are a woman, if you are a person of color, if you are transgender, if you are non-binary, if you are, the list goes on and on, if you're, neuro, if you're not neurotypical, you're gonna have to grow a thick skin because people are jerks. Um, one of my intern mates made a mistake, or one of my classmates made a mistake during her internship because she's a human being and she's new, 
and her senior developers gather together to laugh at her. I hate those people, but things are gonna happen and you have to be prepared to advocate for yourself. If you've been asking these questions, like Brendan said, you're gonna have to sometimes advocate for yourself. And if you've been asking these questions and really getting to know your team members, it's gonna be easier to advocate for yourself because you've become known to them, because they know you, because they respect you, because you respect them. When you encounter situations where people suck, it will be easier for you to go and say, hey, that was not okay what you just said to me. If you have people on your team who you see other people being mean to them, it will be easier for you to say, hey, that was not cool what you just said about that person. So yeah, you might have to grow a thick skin if you're in an underrepresented group, and I'm sorry, but it's, it's true. The next one is easier. Never stop learning. You're new, you're junior, you're gonna be learning forever. Um, one of the great things about continuing to learn is you're always developing and you have to never let anyone interfere with your learning, with your, develop, with your development in your career. If you have someone who says you shouldn't be doing something or who questions what you're doing, if you're honestly learning from it, then it's worthwhile. What you're doing is worthwhile. Always tell yourself that. If you are stuck on something but you're still learning, keep doing that. And you know how you keep learning? <laughs> yeah. Don't be afraid to ask questions again. Part of why you're there as a junior developer is to learn. You're an investment for that team. They brought you on in part because you are new and because you do have a non-traditional background. You approach things from a different way. And so while you're learning, you're gonna be going and you're gonna be saying, hey, what it, like, I don't understand what that is. Um, tell me more. And they're gonna learn from that. They're gonna learn from you asking questions. So it's a two-way street. All of you are learning. Next up, learning how to time box. Um, this was another thing that I am not good at. Um, my manager kind of refers to this as failing fast, which I don't, I don't like failure, um, I'm a perfectionist. I used to be a vet, if I failed something could die. But in the case of tech, unless you're working for like NASA, odds are nothing is going to die. So failing fast basically means saying, I'm gonna give myself a day to finish this. I'm a junior developer, senior developer over there, it might take that person an hour, but I'm gonna give myself a day, and if at the end of the day I haven't finished it, I'm gonna ask a question. Ideally, when you time box, you're gonna get better and better at doing this, and you're going to maybe time box a little bit smaller each time. I like that one. You're going to maybe say, this took me last time I did it, it took me a day, today I'm gonna aim for four hours, and you're gonna get a little bit and a little bit faster. You might still fail, but you're gonna be failing faster, and that is your goal. It's not failure unless you don't learn from it. And in this case, if you fail faster and faster every time, you're making progress. It won't feel like you are, but you are. This one scared me to death. When I submitted code for my first code review, I was like, oh my God, they're gonna know that I'm awful and that I suck and that I'm new and that I don't belong here, imposter syndrome. And you know what? My mentor said, oh, okay, fix these. And I fixed them and I was like, great. And she sent it back to me and said, okay, fix these other things. And I was just like, really? And so I fixed those and I sent it back and then she sent it back to me again and was like, so these other things. And I was just like, oh my God. <laughs> but I fixed those too. And at the end of it, I got to this thing that I didn't know how to fix. Guess what I did? That's right. She was talking about singletons and using, ang and I'm like, I don't even know what a singleton is. And I was in stand-up and I didn't understand it and it was part of my review and I finally said, I don't know what this is and they answered my question. So, summarize, what are we gonna do as junior developers? Yes, we're gonna ask questions and we're not gonna be afraid and you know why we're gonna do that? Because your perspective is valuable. You are on your team for a reason. 
You bring valuable input, you're an investment, you're a fresh set of eyes. If the senior people on your team thinks that something makes sense and you come along and say, I don't get it, then you know what? It didn't make sense. You are valuable to your team. And if you are someone out here who is more senior, don't be those people who got behind my friend's back and made fun of her. It is your job to support them. Thank you very much.